And President Biden meets with several world leaders today following Iran's attack on Israel over the weekend. Hundreds of drones and missiles were fired from Iran toward Israel, but almost all of them were shot down. Fox's Madeline Rivera is live in Washington with the latest. Good morning. Good morning, Lauren and Brandon. Besides those high-level talks, the White House is also on a messaging blitz this morning. They say the joint defensive efforts between Israel, the United States, and other partners in the region was a success against Iran's attack, and they're encouraging Israel to consider that before taking further actions. The hope is that we can de-escalate the tensions. That's really what uh, the president's been trying to do. In a conversation with G7 leader Sunday, President Biden urged restraint in the Middle East. He maintains U.S. support for Israel is ironclad, but he says there is one thing the U.S. won't do, and that's participating in a counteroffensive if Israel does launch one against Iran. Israel is still weighing its response. Right now is when the world must stop ignoring Iran's crimes and take action. As Iran's mask has fallen... U.S. officials say Navy and Air Force assets, which were moved to the region ahead of an anticipated attack, took down 70 Iranian drones and ballistic missiles. I think Israel this morning is now much stronger than they were yesterday, and Iran is relatively weaker than it was yesterday. On Capitol Hill, there's a renewed sense of urgency to provide more aid for Israel. Lawmakers, though, are divided on how to respond. Bipartisan calls are growing for the House to take up the Senate-passed $95 billion foreign aid bill that includes money for Israel, Ukraine, and the Indo-Pacific. I just think we should follow and have Israel's back in the situation. This week, the House is shifting its legislative schedule, teeing up 17 bills related to Israel or targeting Iran. Lauren and Brandon. Madeline Rivera live in Washington, D.C. this morning. Thank you.